Previously, in my last video, I talked about my first year of computer science, how I transferred from business, started coding in the courses I took up until the end of my first year as I was about to start my first developer internship. The video gained a lot of traction after my other video blew up, so thank you all so much for the support. From that, I received a lot of questions asking for advice on how to get started in tech. Now everyone is different, but what I can do is share my own experience and hopefully it'll help some of you. So I'll continue on my last video and talk about the second year of my computer science degree, the start of my first internship as a full stack developer. Just before we start, I noticed over 90% of you guys are not subscribed, so please don't be shy. Please. Please, I'm begging. <laughs> so I'll start by talking about how I got the internship, then my experience during it, and what I learned from it, which was a lot. In order to explain how I got the internship, we have to go back in time a little bit. Summer 2020. I spent a lot of time in different tech communities I found online, basically just spamming for advice. As a transfer student, I felt like I was very behind, especially when I saw my friends already with two, three internships, and I literally just started coding. But at the end of the day, fear of embarrassment is not a good reason to give up on something you want, so I just had to humble myself. One person in particular helped me a lot. This guy named Viking Canadian I met on Discord. I didn't even know who he was at the time, but he told me about his internship at a company called Genetech, and I learned that he was doing full stack web development with React and C Sharp. Wait, sorry. C hashtag, C hashtag. Now, I didn't know either of those technologies because they don't really teach stuff like that in school. Instead, they teach. Um, what do they teach? They Java, right? They teach Java uh, public static string args. So I thought if I made a project with the exact same tech stack the company's using, it'll give me an advantage. So I decided to make it my goal to get the same exact position and then be more selective during my second internship search. By the way, you can also do this by checking the job descriptions of smaller companies. They usually mention the exact technologies they use. For this, I followed a tutorial on YouTube, which taught me about backend concepts like how to build a REST API, MVC, and design patterns like dependency injection. With this, I was able to put a backend focused project on my resume. And just in case you didn't know, web and app development are mostly separated into front and backend. The front end is the UI. So you see the subscribe button below that is red and white. That is the front end. And when you click on it and every time I upload it notifies you, that functionality is the backend. But actually what I'm saying right now is a code. And if you do full stack, that means you work on both front and back end. So then for my front end project, I used one of the websites that I built in one of my courses as I showed in my last video. And I realized that I was putting too much pressure on my teammates for that project because I really wanted to put it on my resume to help get my first job. All right, guys, you ready to do this project? I know the prof didn't ask, but maybe we can build a back end too and like deploy on the... Guys? Yeah. Guys, wait. Yeah, I feel so bad, but... Uh, at least now I learned that in a team project, you should definitely get to know your teammates goals first because that lets you know how much effort they're willing to put in. But hey, now that I have my internships, I'm the guy who doesn't do shit in team projects anymore at school. Uh, in fact, my teammates are probably watching this right now. And if you are, I'm sorry, I've been making YouTube videos instead of pushing code. <laughs> And I also took another quick tutorial on React just to put the technology in the skills section of my resume uh, <laughs> and it worked. Now, I got the interview after applying through my school's co-op portal, where they have a bunch of awesome jobs like this one. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but seriously, they had some, like, real jobs too. So, the interview itself was actually pretty easy and was more theory-focused. So, I was asked to explain object-oriented programming concepts like polymorphism. Um, wait, th that's the wrong image. There you go, polymorphism. And I talked about my projects. And they also gave me one really easy lead code question, which was to check if a string is a palindrome. Uh, a palindrome is basically when a word is the same when you reverse the characters in it. So you could either check the letters in the string or use a stack data structure. And you should always know your time complexities. And if you don't know what that is, if you don't know your big O notation, then eesh yikes dude, you are actually perfectly fine and can keep building apps because it doesn't actually matter that much. So here's my resume when I applied for my first internship. So once I get an interview, there's usually three major things I do to prepare. One is revising my computer science theory concepts, so the stuff you learn in school and being able to explain them. 
Two is to actually practice coding because a lot of companies do coding tests and that's when stuff like lead code comes into play. Third is behavioral. So I practice my introduction and all of my stories just to really maximize my chances. From this internship, I learned so much. Aside from these technologies you see here, I also got the chance to learn good practices, how to work in a team, and also just asking the dumb questions. I think especially for your first internship, you want to get as many dumb questions out the way as you can. It's very possible that you won't do too well on your first internship in a certain field Field, just because it's the first time you're seeing all these new technologies and processes. But I think the important part is to just learn as much as you can from the mistakes you're going to make so that once you get that even better second internship, which you will, you'll be better equipped to get that return offer. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'll know if I get my return offer in about two, three weeks. So subscribe if you want to see me succeed or subscribe if you want to see me fail. Uh, either way, I'll be here and I'll let you know. So good luck. Thank you and good luck to you too. Are you still here? If you're still here, put one in the comments. And by the way, uh, I stream every week on Twitch, Frying Pan Live. You can follow me and, Bro, uh, on there and Instagram. Stop promoting yourself. What are you doing? Stop. All right, all right. Oh, and join the Discord. Dude, no one wants to hear that. Okay, okay. What are you doing? Stop. Oh, just twitter.com slash code No, dude, dude. Dude, get out of okay, here. Dude, I'm get just, out of here. Stop, stop. Video's over, bro. Get, what are you doing? Yeah. Only fans, Frank. <laughs> I don't even have an I'm only kidding, fans. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, dude. Dude, go away. The video's over, dude. Go away. Dude, you go, go away. away. Dude. Go. I go. Stop. Okay, you go. Stop. You go. I'll go. Alright. Alright. I'm sorry. I don't know who this guy is. TikTok. TikTok. Frying. Frying pan. Dot.